then monitoring air quality and carbon dioxide levels is going to be important because it's a part of the overall sealed structure, right? So, um, you know, is carbon dioxide, you know, a, a part of the built environment, keeping that at a certain level? If so, what level to minimize microbial growth? Um, in, in, in your apartment in Austin, even if you've tried to seal the building, the air is still coming in from outside. It's just being processed. So you're, you're never in a situation where you're recycling the air inside the building in a way that would ever lead to a significant increase in carbon dioxide concentrations. Hmm. So we, you know, we, even when we look at positive pressure rooms inside hospitals or negative pressure rooms inside hospitals, you know, you, even when we pack it with people, we see only a small increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. But we actually demonstrated you can use the carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere to predict how many people are present in the room because it does go up a little bit, but never to dangerous levels. Um, you know, this is this. It just can't. I mean, there's just too much air exchange with the outside. So it's uh, it's 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 something you can look into, but it, it's never going to be a major threat. What you really do need to focus on is the fact that you're dealing with an environment which is dynamic. and has, um, has a lot of opportunity for change, right? So putting in beneficial things will not necessarily worry about oxygen and carbon dioxide, but will improve what your body is exposed to in terms of the antigens, in terms of the uh, you know reduction in some harmful gases, that kind of thing. That's what we're most interested in. So air purification then should be a big part of, of the story. Yeah, but you know, you want air purification alongside. If you, if if I just put a, an air filter in a room, I'll get rid of the bacteria and the viruses and the fungi. If I take an infant and I put them in that room, they're never going to get any kind of microbial exposure, which would actually be beneficial to their health. Hmm. But if I take them and I put them in a in a room with an air filter, it gets rid of the pathogens they might be exposed to. Um, but then if I just stick a dog and let the dog lick the baby's face and I put loads of plants around the room, I'm providing further stimulation that that child can then get in order to improve and develop its immune system. Same is true for you, right? You cannot just purify the air and hope for the best. You need, you need um, a rich, diverse exposure to help you. Definitely right. So uh, just wait, pushing back on that a little bit, then couldn't I just go outside and then Yes. outside I've got Going the green outside is great. Yeah, and I've got the antigenic stimulation, whereas then I can go inside and then basically let my immune system relax a little bit because it's not constantly bombarded. Absolutely. It's just unfortunate that most Americans spend 90% of their time indoors. Yeah, definitely. Going outside, and if you look outside the vast majority of American, even suburban environments, there aren't a lot of places to walk, right? It's a car-driven society. Most places don't even have, uh, you know, a sidewalks. Um, we... in the urban environment it's even worse so it's you know this is a real problem we need to provide people with access to those spaces and the only way to do that is to either build them or bring them into the home like we did with you know bringing soil into a kid's experience or taking the kids to the forest or making the building itself more biologically viable that's the that's the way that we've overcome the limitations of our current societal norms Definitely. All right. And then, so in terms of the wetness, so then that gets the humidity, right? So is there a, a humidity level that once it, the built environment gets above a certain percentage that, uh, like how wet, like how, how humid below 45%? This is, yeah, yeah, there's an entire, uh, the, the, there's an entire uh, society, indoor air society that's focused on this, this question. The majority of it is actually keeping the humidity at a level which makes us feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and as long as it, uh, we feel comfortable, it's very unlikely the humidity is going to be high enough to allow moisture to form on walls, which will cause um, uh, fungi to grow. But again, it's there are ways to mitigate that fungal growth, either with the introduction of antifungals into the um, building material or potentially creating a living structure in that building, which the building material, which prevents the growth of fungi or prevents the dominance of particular fungi, even when it is wet. that those are ongoing research topics and not necessarily developed products.